Hey there, comic fans. This is Peter Palmiotti of Human Art Studio. This is Making Comics and Art, episode 281. And today's title, I Don't Wanna, is so true. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. And not going to be a long long stream um but i did say i would come on and i want to be better about being true to my word um you know <laughs> i usually am over time but i want to be more to my word as far as if i, if I say i'm going to do something on the day, I want to do it on the day. And so I uh, played with my cats, fed my cats. They are all currently lying down, although one of them was just up. So if I get interrupted, I get interrupted. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm going to fill in some black and chit chat um and we shall see what we shall see um so yeah <laughs> it's funny the, the the uh cover image i found um oh before before i do that uh so I did a video earlier, and that was strictly to show off, you know, what I throw into my video description box and, and a couple other things that maybe people, not everybody is aware of, like, as far as things on my channel and whatnot. Um, and uh, Fanta, one of my subscribers, Reminded me of uh, Jason Bascom's project, Fro Frog G. Uh, Fro Frog G being also part of the project. Um, and I was like, yeah, I wanted to put his, his link. So I have a bunch of, in short, <laughs> I have a bunch of uh, links to campaigns uh some are active some are in demand uh i think at least one of them is just a store link um, but it's where you can pick up everybody's project and go check it out you know all that jazz so i took care of that very that took a little bit um yeah just to make sure all the campaigns are active and and current um you know at, at some point i have less on my plate um i want to get crazy and, and like really share a whole bunch of campaigns although you know not having the strongest internet and pc uh kind of puts a, a little bit of a damper on that and because it would be much easier to share things if it didn't take 100 years to load certain things uh but anyway to get back to my point of uh the uh, cover image i grabbed up is a i believe it's a woman on a on a bench or whatever she's laying down on uh and she's like wake me when i'm famous um which is slightly tied to the idea of i don't wanna you know we we all we all have a lot on our plates. Hey. 
Devil Fly is here saying hell. He says, I'm drawing too. Awesome, awesome. Well, welcome, sir. Um, yeah, so wake me when I'm famous is like we all have a lot on our plate and there's definitely times like me now currently I'm exhausted out of a full day and and yet I choose to also come on here in the evening which is slightly insane to uh add more to my day and get a little more done on this piece. Um, you know, I want to, what I do want to do <laughs> is, is make better progress on a slew of things I got going on. So that I can be more on top of my workload. Um, you know, another thing I did today is I tackled, and I was doing it for a couple of hours. I tackled uh, the files on my computer, and I, I can't imagine um, freaking being a colorist. Something, something I want to get into, um, but I know, I know how like colorists like files, big files, big ass files. Um, really start piling up on, on people's computers and, and wherever they choose to keep their files. Um, I really, I, I barely have anything on my computer and yet it takes me a couple of hours to go through everything. Um, move things around, making sure they're sort of in the right sections and, um, easy, you know, I can easily find certain things because uh, I am dealing with files from a bunch of different creators and it's like, well, what, did you get the latest uh, artwork or did you see the colors on this piece? And it's funny, I, I did six covers for an anthology, American Alchemist Anthology. And I downloaded what was in the Dropbox to my computer. And I only looked at it today and I was like, wait, one of them is a color file. <laughs> uh, I didn't even see um, that one of the covers was colored. And... Uh, uh, there's more conversation going on. Okay. So, Fanta's Dark Angel. That's right. <laughs> and Elliot. Elliot Rodriguez Art. What's up, Peter? Um, and uh, Devil Flyer dropping a link. Is that Fanta's uh, channel? I subscribed to that the other day. Although, um, I haven't actually checked out her videos. Did she? Did she sing also? You would know. She's she's constantly on your channel, uh, Rex. <laughs> oh, my YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes, go subscribe to Devil Flyer. As well as Elliot's channel. Yeah, he's got a lot of great videos on his channel and conversations with people. And I've been meaning to... Uh, check out more of them. I was actually looking at your, uh, Elliot, I was looking at your uh, Twitter and it's like, this guy can draw. It's like, I want to be that good one day. 
all these um, I know all these amazing artists. And yeah, I'm, I'm fine as an eager. <laughs> I want to draw better. <laughs> no singing. <laughs> Now it says, uh, thanks for the shout out. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Uh, I do the same with your art. Your inking skills are awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. And he just subbed Devil Fly. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, like there's, there's so many uh, amazing channels out there and uh, a lot of them are below a thousand subscribers. Um, you know, at, at various times, I uh, I shared out a bunch of them in the past. Uh, when I get some time on my hands, I'll do probably before I I head out to. Florida, a little over a month now. Uh, before that, I'll I'll make a list and uh, share that out because yeah, you know we 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 all have to we, we love YouTube and the community and and you know um, and the possibilities of us being there and and exposing our work and. <laughs> Um, but you know, like, because there's a literally billions and billions of videos and, and YouTubers, um, it's hard to get seen and therefore, you know, like YouTube has made certain rules that, uh, really it's, it's not until you pass a thousand subscribers that you really start getting into, uh, the perks, um, of what YouTube has to offer. So I would love to see a lot of my friends' channels grow past that point. Absolutely. So yeah, I guess, I guess the, the the conversation I had in mind was like you know, it's definitely difficult at times to just keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, you know the, the sort of the the logic is that as long as you keep at it and keep working on it and keep working on your writing and working on your art, working on your comics and making videos and putting everything out there that your audience will grow. Um, but sometimes it's, it's just, you know, there's too much life going on and you're exhausted and it's hard to keep up with everything. There's so many little things I do. Um, I was watching Rex the other day, just handling a lot of, a lot of business that isn't art, uh, while watching his channel. And, uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I don't want to be doing this. I want to be working on the art, you know? Um, but there's a lot of business behind that you got to keep up with. Uh, it's you know it's all a, a daunting task um, and uh, you know lately um, I would say my, my sleeping hasn't been as good which is making it a little more difficult to uh, get on top of things um, 
but I am working towards cleaning up my schedule a little bit and getting a little more focused on certain things. Um, that will definitely improve upon what I'm doing for sure. Uh, I wanted to mention, um, I watched, was it Chaos Walking, which is the uh, Tom Holland, Daisy Ridley movie, came out maybe a year or so ago. I finally watched that. Uh, it was a movie that um, my late friend Lisa r recommended I check out, and I, I asked her, like, you know, it's like, eh, I don't know. We'll, It looked okay, um, but it also looked like work to watch it. <laughs> but I was glad I did. I, I watched it the other night, and uh, it's re it's really interesting. It's like you know, like when, when if you watch fantasy, you get into the lore of what what their world is, and you know, like there's work behind just sitting back and enjoying the movie. Like if you watch something in modern times, you know, nothing is really explained. You're living in that world. So you know how things work, but, uh, watching, uh, chaos walking and certain rules to this world, you know, they had this thing called noise which emanates from them and exposes their thoughts. And, uh, you know, I, I thought, oh, I'm going to watch this movie and it'll just be a lot of noise. And it is that at times, um, but it works with the story. And it was kind of really interesting. Uh, in the end, I really enjoyed it. It was a good flick. And, uh, <laughs> nefarious, what's up? What's up? How you doing, man? What's in what's new in the world of nefarious? I enjoy it when my friends show up and hang out with me. So I know uh, Rex, otherwise known as Devil Fire, is making some art. Is that uh, what you're doing, Elliot? I know it's, uh, it's you're definitely in a different time zone. I forget what time it is by you right now. And what are you up to tonight, Nefarious? Do, 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 do. I think I got my camera too low to my table. I feel like I'm moving my art constantly. I am... It's not so much of a bigger piece. It's actually smaller than a comic page. So I, I gotta, I gotta raise it up a little bit. Ah, eight fifty-one. Yeah, so you're only an hour earlier. And uh, nefarious. I was working on. Some scripts earlier, and now I'm writing a video essay about Tim Drake Rabbit. Ah, oh, curious. Um, Elliot said, uh, taking the pics you posted of the con, the fairies, great stuff. I got to go check those out. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually working on a page 
of my own book. Excellent. Uh, feel free to share any details you want. Uh, or you just want people to go to your channel and watch for, for your video updates of your project. That's right. When I, I now I remember when I had you on my channel, yeah, it was only an hour difference. You know, some people are halfway around the world. I, I lose track. It's, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been back and forth with my, a friend of mine who's in Australia and he's he's six hour difference um, I'm getting pop up ads <laughs> what a notification from my browser. Get Spotify Premium for free. No thanks. You just want me to work for it. <laughs> it is pretty much. Um, other than YouTube, I listen to uh, Spotify music podcasts. Uh, they have some audiobooks on there. Good stuff. I could do without the ads, but I also don't have the money to get rid of the ads currently. <laughs> oh, which reminds me, um, I am going to upgrade my StreamYard, but I figured out I'll run out of my hours first before I do so. So, uh, I might have, I might have a dozen hours left I could plow through. So when I'm close to zero, then I'll upgrade. <laughs> I'll, I'll make it last a little longer. At least it will seem that way. I'm not a rich man. One day, one day. Um, but, you know, I plan to do a lot of these these pieces of artwork. Um, and I forget if I mentioned, but, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of well-known characters, 10 by 10 pieces, penciled ink by me, uh, 30 bucks a shot. Uh, but I, I thought, you know, since a couple of people mentioned recently that they, they were fans of razor uh back from, from the 90s and i worked on a bunch of razor issues and i was like you know i should do razor like i'm known for aquaman mostly um i did a lot of x-men work but i wasn't really credited for a lot of it <laughs> uh, but i will be doing a lot of x-men characters because i love the x-men um but, you know, as far as independent characters I might be known for, Razor is definitely up there. <laughs> says, yeah, man, I like the Mark Brooks one. <laughs> and he says, I'm doing a 10-page preview of my character's it's to introduce the characters. I'm also doing some concept art. Awesome. Super sweet. Yeah, you know, I, I love just seeing, seeing a lot of people I know, I follow, getting into the comic making groove doing their own books. Yeah, I definitely think we, we should all be doing our own books. 
you know, it's, it seems like more and more, the more people Kickstarter and, and Indiegogoing and crowdfunding and I think, I think there's room enough. Well, definitely less, less people seem pleased with Mullen DZ. <laughs> so let all the fans come to us, I say. I remember back when I was working on a <laughs> yep. a simple statement. Do your own thing. There isn't a better time for it. Absolutely. It says, yeah, man, it's the only way to do it. <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say something, wasn't I? Uh, <laughs> the trouble with the streaming by myself is I, I forget my own thoughts. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't important. Do, 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 do. Um, but yeah, other than these these pieces that I'll be drawing myself, I want to I want to do some like sexy punk girls and do some stickers. Um, I've been uh, waiting on a friend of mine. Uh, I, I did this alien artwork that's literally the best thing I ever drew. Um, that I, I've discovered when going through my files that the file I had of the alien piece was, um, it wasn't a high DPI. It was less than a hundred. And I want to make, I want to make a quality print out of it. Um, so I mess I messaged my friend who, uh, who bought the artwork and uh, yeah, he's had some challenges finding it. Um, but eventually uh, he'll get that to me and I'll, I asked a friend of mine who does really good prints um, where he gets them done. So, I'm going to get some high high quality prints of that. And I'll also be doing like any, any of these pieces that I, and I really like. Um, I make these into prints, you know, I'll either color them myself or maybe I'll get a friend of mine and color them. Um, I just want to have, start having more stuff than just me doing inking for people. It's like, I gotta have more ways to make an income. Uh, and also, you know, it's like, I have, I'm gonna have a lot more to sell art wise, uh, coming up. Um, but it's not, it's not like, you know, there's people clamoring to buy my artwork every day. So, I have, to, I have to work up to that. <laughs> yeah. Let people see see me draw more and stream more and all that jazz. And Elliot says, I have to get going, Peter. I'll be sure to catch the rest on replay. Be safe. You too, man. Appreciate you coming by. And uh, thanks for the kind words. You are awesome.
sometimes when I begin my day, uh, this is what I do. It's like to really uh, get warmed up. Either I'm sketching something or I, I take out something that, you know, I need to be filling in some blacks. Um, now I've got to find... Uh, let's see. Do I have it here? No. Do I have it here? It should be in here. So now I'm looking for... I know I, ha I have it in my drawer, but I, I want to put it on screen for myself to check it out. Okay, that's all that stuff. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, a while back, I started on a, a pit piece penciled by Chris Graves. I will eventually be getting back to that as well. I know it is like, it seems like lately there's no logic to uh, what the hell I'm doing. Uh, but trust me. Okay, so ink pieces. Oh, God, where did I put it? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, this is it. This is it. Okay. And it's this one. All right. I want to make sure I'm filling in the right things. <laughs> All right, so I get this up here. Uh, but yeah, as a warm up, filling in blacks, I, I definitely find there's a certain meditation to it. Uh, but it also gets you into the swing of things. It's like you might not want the first thing you do when you sit down at your desk to be uh, dropping some lines that, you know, have to have a certain quality to them. So if you're just filling in blacks, you get, you get your hand going and your brain activating um, so that when you are more awake and conscious of what you're doing, you tackle uh, the harder stuff. Oh, I know what I was going to I'm working on an Aquaman piece, and uh, I remember when I was actually working on Aquaman for DC Comics um, is when I had... Um, I had a, a number of assistants uh, because working on a monthly book is, is brutal. And um, so I, I guess I had, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five, five assistants, you know, they, they weren't all ongoing. Um, I probably only had one assistant at a time. Um, but I had, I had five all together, I believe. And they filled in blacks for me and they, they, uh, inked some backgrounds. Um, uh, based off my very detailed descriptions of what I wanted them to do, um, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of work to take on an assistant. <laughs> uh, and, and regardless of the level of talent, you really have to go over exactly how you want things to be. Um, yeah, I can pull that up later. Don't need to look at you. Um, but it was it was definitely a. a it, I remember before I had the crazy workload 
ongoing and uh, realized like I, I couldn't handle it alone. Um, before that, I was refusing to ever have an assistant. Um, but at the time when I was like just working every day, long, long days, I, I really started to sink in that I, I needed some assist, some help. Um, and uh so i i bit the bullet and decided okay i'll, I'll get some assistance and and um i would say i had a half and half <laughs> experience uh half were good and half were eh. <laughs> oh dirty fatty why is rob lee screen with a hook in this is Aquaman, or at least my, my my take on Aquaman, uh, and it's the Aquaman from the nineties. Um, that I worked on when Peter David was the writer and Jim Calfrey was the penciler artist. I was inking the book. I, I must have inked, I think, twenty five issues in all. Um, my cat is looming up against my leg. It's making me paranoid. Uh, I hate having open ink when my cats are like right there. Cause every one of them jumps on my desk. <laughs> It could be a mess. It could be a mess. If she decides to come on. All right. So all that. And over here. I got the uh, the white acrylic pen. Um, not, not, well... I need to do some bubbles for sure. I'm not sure if I'll do more with that. Um, you know, while, while it's in many ways the the sort of white acrylic pen I have is a hundred times better than the Doc Martin's uh, white acrylic paint I used to use. Um, it's still not it's it's still not perfect. You know, I think the best way to do sort of if you want to do line work in white is digitally. <laughs> I mean, I could fake it. it um, cat's freaking right behind me. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Meow. You want to go out? You want to go out? Yeah, hold on. Hold on, folks. Come here. Come here. Well, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> no, of course not. I think she wants treats and she's hounding me. Sorry about that. Um, she she walked into the kitchen. Hopefully, she'll leave me alone. Uh, one never knows, though. One never knows. Um, yeah, so let me actually, let me pull it out. So I got this acrylic painter and, uh, take, it's a little point. Um, you know, you bash that onto the paper and it's, it 
it's fresh and uh, it's not it's not a teeny tiny point it's kind of thick um, but if you're delicate you can get a thin point out of it which means you can get a thin line but you might have to hit it a couple of times for layers um, okay what was that doing You want to go out? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, yeah, as I was saying, <laughs> she probably didn't want to go out, but she's hounding me, and uh, I just fed her, so, and they always have water and dry food out here. I'll let her in after I stream. Yeah, I think it's it's to the point where it's not freezing yet. Um, and and that that's uh, Clea who was bugging me. <laughs> uh, Clea does love the freezing cold. She also loves the extreme heat of summers. You know, if any, if, you know, any one of my three cats is outside, it's usually clear. Uh, but, you know, it's like I, I get these, these treats for them and she wants to make a whole meal out of it a lot of times. It's like I just gave her some earlier, so. I'm not made of money, cat. And you don't earn enough. So. There's all that. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right, so uh, let's see. Do I have it open? Yeah, yeah right. I'm going to have it up. Okay, so I'm going to share maybe what you've seen before, maybe not. Yeah, this. So this is the piece I did previously uh, with the various different shading ideas I had. Um, let's see, make that black. Um, I can do this. All right. Um, yeah, fill that in. Okay. And, and mark it. <laughs> so forget that, that, that. Over here. I'll expand upon it later at some point. Um, this, yeah, that looks good. That's black. All right, I could drop out of here. 
Uh, and yeah, so that gets black, and that gets black, and that gets black, and that. Um, and this is hair. I didn't do any lines there. Um, and there's a lot more darkness that I'm going to hit, but I'm going to sort of probably won't do it tonight, but uh, I'm going to figure out exactly how heavy and all that. Because um, I want to do a lot of feathering on this piece. I um, think it would look cool, but I don't want to go too heavy. So it's kind of like do some, take a step back and see if, you know, what's there is enough and, you know, sort of take it stage by stage because it you know right now it's completely open as to exactly how i finish this off uh it's, this is not a paint by numbers this is not already decided <laughs> kind of figuring out as i, I go But uh, I mean, I, I really like, I really like it right now, and I don't want to ruin it. So, I'm being, uh, I'm being cautious. Do, 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 do. <sighs> Cat hair. It's good luck, I guess. I guess, I guess. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I was saying before regarding my thumbnail cover. It's like you don't always feel like it, but Really, the, the best way to get into doing something is to to do it for five, ten minutes. <laughs> like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to even do five minutes of this tonight. And, you know, uh, I'll probably be doing an hour. Um, and that's great. That's, you know, it's like. You just give it a little effort and you, you want to give it a little more, give it a little more, keep going. And that's a good thing. Um, oh, in regards to the sort of wake me when I'm famous, it's like, you know, it would be nice to be famous. Um, I've had many thoughts on that subject. But I, I just wanted to be doing a lot better. And I was thinking, like, you know, if I made 100000 a year doing this stuff, um, that would be excellent. Like, you know, if I, if I made more than that, that would be phenomenal. But, like, you know, it's like if I made a, a hundred grand a year, Making comics, inking comics, selling artwork, blah, blah, blah. Like everything added up. Um, that would be perfect. If I did that over the next 10 years, that would be excellent. Like I sort of have a 10-year plan with Retro and, and a bunch of other projects that would be ongoing. And, uh, you know, it's like everybody who does anything sort of has an audience. And, 
you know, I, I don't have to be one of those YouTubers that have like 300 or more people showing up in their streams or whatever. And, you know, it'd be nice if that ha happened every once in a while. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's more likely when I have uh, guests on, like, those videos do better. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's also good for them. Like it gets them the exposure, gets them, you know, people checking out their campaigns, their, their sites, following them online. You know, I have, I have, I have had, had have had, <laughs> uh, plenty of creators who, who haven't had a, a, a big reach come on you know like in previously like when i just had the podcast uh came on the podcast or come on my youtube channel like and you know definitely benefited from it that's you know i mean it's one of my main goals is like give more exposure to those that don't have because you know there was a time when i was struggling just to get my first 100 subscribers i, th I think in the it, it was the most ridiculous it took it took a long ass time for me to get my first 100 subscribers on this channel um but that's when you know like i did it at a time when it was still new like not many people were doing it and not many people were following those that did. You know, but I, you know, even though like I'm not, I'm not making buco cash right now and I'm not like selling my art every week or whatever. Um, I do have a recognizable name and that, that, benefits me in some ways and, and you know like definitely um, a lot of a lot of people I interact with more like you know people new to me um, recognize my name and recognize you know that I've been in this business forever and that, that pleases them so <laughs> You know, it's, to me, it's like, I just always want to be working. I just, you know, like, and I want to be, a, I want to be doing a better job at it. And that's, that's part of the reason why I, I put, I don't want to, it's like, I want to be doing a better job at doing everything I'm doing. And that means I got to put in more work. Um, and it's like, is definitely like sort of the attitude, like, I don't want to, because I already have a ton of work and I'm barely keeping on top of, uh, things now. Um, uh, but you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pile that extra work on. And if you're gonna break through some brick walls, uh, in your career. You hear what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? I'm glad. I'm glad somebody did. And you know, like a lot of times when I stream and, and have only a few people watching, like right now, um, and, you know, it's just just onlookers uh, for whatever the case. Maybe they're working and they're just you know, it's like not everybody interacts with the chat. Um, they, they treat it like a TV, like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's ridiculous, but I, um, I, I've, I've, I got a TV, um, you know, it was, I got it in August. It's now October. Um, I haven't hooked it up yet. I should really get on that.
um, you know, when I, when I watch TV, like, you know, it's like, I'm watching, <laughs> watching TV here where I work, uh, because my computer is my TV, you know, it's where I watch everything. Um, but if I'm watching a movie or a show or whatever, and I'm not actually working or even sketching, although, you know, it's like I, I could watch TV and sit comfortably and, and still have, you know, I have one of those, an art, art board with a handle, like I could actually take it places if I wanted to. Um, but I could just take it into like, if I set, set up the TV in, in my bedroom and sort of sit up in bed, I could bring that, have that on my lap. <coughs> and I'm going to sneeze. Oh, <coughs> uh, bless me. Thank you. Sorry about that. If that was loud. Um, yeah, so I should really look into what I need to do to set that up because um, I'm not so much worried about nailing it to the wall or whatever. I could just lean it up to, against the wall or have it on my uh, other desk. I have, I have another desk in my bedroom. Um, I just got to figure out the cable combination and whatever. If I, if I need to get an additional cable. Because <laughs> I, I would love to, like, you know, if I'm working, then whatever I'm doing on the computer is work-related. Um, but if I'm relaxing, like if I'm eating and just want to watch something really quick, uh, I, can, I can do that in the other room and it can be separate from work. Um, cause uh, I think mentally that will do me better. You know, you don't want to be doing everything <laughs> like I have been doing. I do, I do everything here, which is my. You know, technically it's my living room, but it's really my studio. So what I did tonight is the easy part. I filmed in the blacks, um, but it's, it's one step closer to getting there. Um, yeah, I want to figure out exactly how much I want to feather and, and coarse hatch and, you know, the water, there'll be some feathering there and then I'll go in with the white, you know, over there. And the, there's a little more feathering there for the hair. Um, I could also make that hair or that could be water. You know, it's like, I'll probably make it hair. Um, I wanted to finish this a little bit. But yeah, I, I, I got so much diverse stuff on my plate. Um, I really need to start pushing harder uh, and getting some stuff done and out of my face. Um, like this is something I'll be doing ongoing, um, but I need to do this faster. Uh, I'm, I'm being a, a lot more precious with my first one, then probably all the ones to follow. But um, you know, I'm mostly known for Ackerman, so <laughs> take take a little more time with this one is fine. But I got I got some. Uh, like I, I added uh, Vic King's YouTube link on my channel. If you, if you go directly to my channel, uh, there's a bunch of creators. Uh, it says, be inspired. Uh, I would love for everybody to follow 
all of them. Um, so Vic King is on that list. Uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of different things with him. Uh, he's also going to do a retro piece for me, and I'm inking a Bio War piece for him. Uh, we're doing a wraparound cover for Rex, who was in the chat earlier. Um, and what else? Oh, Apex Comics, we're, we're doing a Madam X one shot or something. Uh, he, he's got to write it. So, figure it out. Um, but I do have, right now, I have the BO War piece. I have uh, stuff by Allison. I have these I'm going to be doing. Um, uh, well, I want to get to the last page of uh, Retro. I haven't finished. <laughs> and here's Jay. He says, you don't want to what? I, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> That's what I don't want to do. I don't want to tell you. Um, no, I was just describing when you know, like for for a million reasons, like when you don't want to do something because you're too tired or whatever, you got to push yourself sometimes. Um, but you know, if if you don't want to, for lame reasons, you got to start looking at the big picture. Like you know, I want to, I want to make my better money. I want more more fans of my work i want you know like there's a long list of things i want and the only way i'm going to get them is by working harder um which means me getting a lot more work done so regardless if i'm feeling like i don't want to well you know If I don't actually do the work I need to do, then I won't actually get the results I'm looking for. So, that's all that. Um, oh, if, if you're watching this, whether, whether it be right now or after the fact, uh, which, you know, you could always comment below the video and let me know your thoughts um, if you if you have any challenges yourself you want to hear me talk about or uh, questions or heck if you want to come on and you know you just drop me a, a message below the video let me know. You could just e easily message me direct on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Three easiest ways. Um, oh, I was going to mention, um, who's watching House of the Dragon? How insane is that show? Um, I'm loving it. Um, I was, I was worried because, you know, everybody was so into the Game of Thrones series. And then when they, they wrecked, wrecked the end of that, <laughs> I was like, oh no, I, I hope, uh, not only that, uh, <clears throat> this, this, this show, which is, you know, years and years earlier, story-wise. Uh, I hope this show is just as good. And I hope it's uh, something I can get into and, and we'll be around for a while. Um, but, you know, also won't fall on its face at the end. 
<laughs> it's like, you know, I think it's 10 episodes the first season. If it's going to be more than one season, I'm not sure. Because they, they've been... Jumping up in time, it seems like almost every episode. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if they're going to breeze through all these characters <laughs> or or what. Um, uh, okay, let's see. I have to go back. He says, then why mention it? <laughs> and then he says, uh, Oh, so every day then? Yes. <laughs> don't want. I don't want to get up. I don't want to work every day. <laughs> uh, I mean, I moved since the last time I was on, but I don't know what new thing I would say. <laughs> we'll get you on when it, when it's you know more timing oriented, for sure. Um, it's the first season. Season. Give it time. <laughs> As far as it failing, I don't want it to fail. I want it to be consistently good. So I can watch, you know, more than one season. But yeah, it's, it's been very good. And, and you know, it's sort of like, you know, it's Game of Thrones. So it's a lot of people die. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know if there's going to be a second season. I don't know. I don't know who will be left, if anyone. But uh, unlike Game of Thrones, this one's kind of focused. It's kind of focused on a much smaller group of people. So, I don't know. You know, I mean, one of the things I liked about Game of Thrones it was so vast that you can, you know, you can really focus on so many different peoples and groups and tribes and what have you. <laughs> we shall see, I guess. We shall see. <laughs> and Jay says it wasn't until season seven that Game of Thrones screwed up. Yeah, and uh, he says, "Where is Rings of Power?" Fell down and went boom right out of the gate. <laughs> you know, I've been I've been holding off watching that because I've heard mixed things about it. Um, and and actually, I was kind of not interested in watching, you know, the the uh, the new Game of Thrones or or the uh, Lord of, new Lord of the Rings. Um, I know that they're called different things, but uh, uh, I did watch ten minutes of, of Rings of Power, and it seemed okay. Uh, but you know, it's like ten minutes, like. Uh, I, heard, I heard it was at best slow. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there's, there's already 18 million things to watch. It's not like I'm missing out if I don't watch it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm back on watching... Uh, Uh, <laughs> uh, walking Dead. Yeah. Get my brain straight. So the last season, the last batch of episodes. 
<laughs> and it says, leave my personal opinion of the grim dark tone of Game of Thrones aside. On paper, I should like ROP more than Hot D simply because of tone, but tone alone does not make a good series, or not a good series make. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching Invisible? Yes. <laughs> It's getting late. I'm getting tired. <laughs> I mean, literally, I was like, I'll come on and fill in some blacks. And I'm, I'm getting towards brain, brain dead for sure. I, you know, I mean, as, as far as Lord of the Rings go, um, I'm quite satisfied with the Peter Jackson movie trilogy. Um, I even watched the Hobbit trilogy, but that didn't really do it for me. Um, that, that could have been one movie. <laughs> but I, I love the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy movies. Uh, Peter Jackson. Uh, I think one day, I'll, you know, it's like I, I saw them in the theater. I think one day I'll watch all the extended versions as well. Probably, probably when I've forgotten most of the film. <laughs> Hey, look, folks, I'm doing littering. Something I don't always do. Uh, but I figured for these piece, pieces, that would be fun. I uh, can't argue that. Well, some minor points in a second film. Fermar and the third film, Dinitor, they don't explain why he was crazy and he easily could have, but better than what I expected. <laughs> it's for the Hobbit trilogy. It was nice to see Sylvester McCoy getting work. Uh, I don't know who that is. Um, is that an actor's name? I saw Sylvester right off the bat, and I was like, is he going to say The Hobbit is like a Sylvester Stallone movie? <laughs> that's, that's where my brain went. Stallone should have been in The Hobbit as Rambo and he, he took out all the hobbits the machine gun that would have been a, a better hobbit movie I can imagine that's what you were saying <laughs> oh, okay so Sylvester McCoy I played right a guest okay Yeah, well, because it's because they all have strange names, it's like hard to remember who's who. And, you know, my memory is not the greatest. Not when it comes to stuff I, you know, I've seen and enjoyed and forgot <laughs> most of it.
Boom, 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 boom. But yeah, I thought the uh, talking dragon was cool. Look at me doing lettering. It's amazing. Hello, <laughs> well, no, it was Sylvester McCoy was a Scottish actor best known for playing Doctor Who in the late 80s. Was he the Doctor Who with the scarf? That's the one I watched the most when I was a kid. Uh, he was the other good wizard in the Hobbit trilogy besides Gandalf, the animal friendly one. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I do remember him, as a matter of fact. Um, eh, this is okay. <laughs> as far as lettering goes. Uh, anyway, that'd be that. Um, yeah, more to technical stuff, whatnot, uh, feathering. Uh, I want to get my repair graphs uh, cleaned and, and tackle the technical hook part. Um, I got the water. I forget. Did I do any anything with these guys? The background, background. No, I think I left that open. Yeah. Yeah, I left, like, this whole section kind of open. Um, it's kind of a weird composition, composition but, uh, you know, it's, like, black, and, and it's, like, white over here. Um, I like it. I like it so far. I just don't want to mess it up. But, uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for those that join me in the chat and conversating with me. Um, <laughs> it's Tom Baker. Okay. That's right. Tom Baker was the uh, Doctor Who scarf. Yeah. That, that was the 70s. Okay, that makes sense. Since I was young in the 70s. Um, yeah, that's the one I watched the most. Uh, and then, you know, when, uh, David Tennant and Matt Smith, I like those two runs. I, I think the writing on those two runs are, was pretty brilliant, as well as the acting was great and the cast and all that. Uh, Peter was good, too. Peter Cabaldi. Um, stories were a little goofier. Uh... And uh, the woman, not so much. It, the, the whole team seemed to change. He was the first doctor I need to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. E even though those not even familiar with Doctor Who know who I'm talking about when I mention 
and Doctor Who with the scarf. And uh, that's the nice thing I could say about it. <laughs> House of the Dragon. It's nice Matt Smith getting work. <laughs> he's really good in the show. He's, it's like, you know, when, when I saw pictures of House of the Dragon, um, I wasn't sure. Like, I, I, I really like Matt Smith. But uh, unless it, he looked, he looked really weird with white hair, and I didn't know I was going to like him as much as I did, or do. Um, yeah, the same team wrote both Smith and Cabaldi. Um, yeah, I'm forgetting. I'm feeling like the head writer. I don't know if it's the head writer or the name I saw pop up most most often. But I thought some of that, some of those episodes are freaking brilliant. Um, the writing is really, really good. Uh, you know, it it it, it just seemed like it it. It wasn't even quality of writing. It was more like they were they were passionate and in love with the show, and it showed up in, in the stories that they were telling. Um. <laughs> Matt Smith always looked really weird. <laughs> well, he looks especially weird as, as his character in the show. <laughs> uh, and he's not He's not necessarily a nice man. <laughs> you know, I, I did I did see the um, uh, Morbius, and I I knew going in how I would feel about the the movie, and it's kind of like eh, it was entertaining, I guess, but I didn't think anything super special about it. Um, and and yeah, it was it was nice to see him in it, but uh, yeah, it was okay. Um, so really, the real Arcanian says Russell T Davies was the lead writer. Eccleston and Tenet, uh, Stephen Muffet uh, was the one of the writers under Davies wrote Smith and Cabaldi. Yeah, Stephen Muffet, I think is a phenomenal writer uh i think i want to i want to see what else he's he's worked on uh and see if i would like it so I, I think he was the one bringing the high quality i could be wrong like you know and i know it's like teams of writers and uh sometimes one writer gets more credit over others but um yeah it's, it's it was a quality show for for a time, um, but yeah, it's it's um, getting late. Um, definitely streamed a lot longer than I thought it would, but uh, I made some some progress on some art, uh, which is always a good thing. And um, yeah, more tomorrow. So uh, everybody, if you haven't already liked, comment, hit that bell, um, subscribe. Become a patron, all that jazz. Then uh, take a minute and go do that. Uh, otherwise, I uh, hope you have a great, great night. And I'll see you again tomorrow. So, 